guys, for those of you that don't know, my name is Yesenia Estrella de Anda, and this is my channel. So I wanted to do a Q&A, which would just be a video of me trying to let you get to know me, and just me wanting to find out what you want to know about me, or what you want to know about the industry, or what I have learned, and so on and so forth. So just, I do apologize ahead of time, because I do tend to talk and ramble, but I do have my laptop right here with little points so I can make sure I stay on track and I don't end up talking about me wanting to dye my hair red when this video is about other things. So I will try my best with that and this is my first video that I will be posting where I'm face to face. Um, normally you see my videos where I do voiceovers but um, I wanted to try something different. I want to get to know you guys more and I would definitely love for you guys to get to know me more as well. Um, so yeah, just stick around. Thanks guys. Okay, so the first question, now don't mind me, I'm going to be looking down here and there so I can make sure I stay on track and just to read the questions. The first question is, what made you realize that nails is what you wanted to do? So number one is, I went to IADT in Chicago, which is a fashion school and um, I love fashion. Like I loved it and I was in it and I did just say loved it. Uh, because I no longer am in school and college and doing all that I actually dropped out and took some time off I realized that I wasn't in love with it anymore and I realized that me taking the metro down to the train station to walk a few blocks to get to school especially in the winter and at that time where I realized that not only was I not passionate um, both me and my husband boyfriend at the time uh, found out we were expecting so it just became kind of like it clicked together um, I felt like that was another sign for me to be like okay this isn't for me you know having to go through all that process to go to school which is fine you know it's it's great when you're passionate about it and I felt like I lost that so I felt like I needed to take care of my baby and I needed to to focus on my baby you know more than anything so I did drop out of there and then I became a stay-at-home mom and you know I have one of the most amazing men in my life he is so humble hard-working and he was so determined he wanted me to stay home and he wanted me to spend as much time as I could with my little ones he just wanted to provide for us so it was such a great opportunity to be able to be a stay-at-home mom and I've been a stay-at-home mom since going on nine years I think so it, you know I'm used to um, I'm used to working and I started working when I was 16 so I'm used to working and making my own money and buying whatever I want whenever I want and it was a big change it was a huge change and um, I'm the type that when I focus on something I really do focus and um, I try my best to multitask as much as I can but I really do focus on that one thing and I sometimes you know let go of other things so I felt like that's what I was doing I was so focused on my son and my husband and our home that I started losing track of who I was and um, I kind of was down a little bit and my husband saw that and he you know he knows how I am and how I was at the time and he was like whatever you need to do go and do it if you need to get your hair done your nails done you need to go out with your girls you need to have dinner brunch whatever it is go and do you because I know you and this isn't you and I want you to be happy and that was something that I was like, whoa, snap out of it, you know, like something's wrong with me. So I did and I started to go get my nails done every two weeks because I couldn't see the outgrowth on my nails. So I started going every two weeks. Then I started realizing that I was spending too much on nails. Um, it was kind of like, if you want to say Domingo, my husband was just like, here you go, go and do you. But at the same time, I was like, hmm. I can use that money for something else. What else can I use it for? We can benefit doing some other things. So I started investigating and um, I know this is the first question. I keep going, we're five minutes in, I swear. And um, so I started investigating and I was like, maybe if I do my nails at home, I can save some money. And I will still look really good because my nails will be done. You know, I've, I don't, I've always felt like I had some kind of artistic inside of me. Like I've always been very creative. And I've always loved working my hands. I love sewing. I can sew. I can make dresses. Everything. Everything I learned from school. Everything that was hands-on. I learned it and I kept it. The stuff I didn't like was like the gen eds. That's the stuff that kept me out of school. 
but um, I love creating stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. So I watched nonstop YouTube videos. I got my first kit, which was from Walmart, and it was the Sensation Nails kit. It came with a little lamp, as well as a polish, a base, a top coat, a wooden cuticle pusher, and I think lint-free wipes and maybe alcohol. I don't remember. I paid forty dollars for it at the time. This was years ago, guys, when I first started. Excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. And um, I paid forty dollars for it. And mind you, I would pay like forty-five for my nail set. So for me to pay for that and still be able to use it for more multiple sets, I was excited. And I started learning and I did my manicure and then my mother-in-law saw and she was like, ooh, can I get them done? My mom, my sister, my cousin, my aunts, ooh, can I get them done? So I was like, whoa, okay. And they would start to pay me and I'm like, oh, I can't charge, you know, I'm not licensed. But they would tip me and it was like, well, I'm good at it and I'm making money why not right it, and it was just people that were close to me of course because you know I didn't want random strangers coming in to the to our home so that's how I started and that's how um, I kind of knew I wanted to do nails because I was good at it it wasn't really like I was passionate 100% on it until let me tell you until I got my social media Put my pictures out there. I uh, had people reaching out to me. When I did my first full set, and I think it was my mother. I'm not sure if it was her or it was another person, but I'm pretty sure it was her. And she passed out my cards, and I got a ton of people calling me back. And I seen that picture. I was like, "Wow, I am freaking good at this. Like, I, I'm not amazing, but I am good. Like, I know what I can become." And this is fun. It's not hard work. It's not work. To me, it wasn't work. I was creating and I was making and I was doing. So to me, it wasn't work. And that's when it just, I don't know, it just clicked. Like, I can get paid to do something that I truly enjoy doing just for fun. Like, it's not even like, oh, I have to go and do these people's nails or anything. It was just, it was fun. And I felt like I found myself and I, I was bringing something to the table. I felt like even if it was $20 I was getting for a manicure or acrylic or whatever it was, it was $20 I was bringing to the table and I was still home. So that just, that made me love what I was doing and it went from there. Um, okay, so question number, two, whoa, it went right to, a, to question number 12. So definitely not question number 12. I promise I'll shorten the other questions up, but it's just, this one was a long one. Um, number two, was there a bump on the road that has made it hard for you to do nails or that has affected your performance overall? This question, when I read this, I almost started crying because I felt like this person wanted to know what I was going through. I'm tearing up, I'm sorry guys. Um, but um, there is something that has came in my life around December 2017. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and for those of you that don't know, I'm going to just read it real quick because I tend to ramble off. Um, it is considered an invisible disease. What that means is that you really can't tell when someone has it unless they tell you. Um, and it's hard because people see me and they're like, she's okay, she's not sick. Like, what is she complaining about? And it's like, no, I'm dying inside. Like, I genuinely feel like I'm dying inside. Um, so the the feelings that I get, I'm just going to give you a couple. I plan on making a full video on this, explaining more details. I, I honestly think that um, it, it's very mental and it is extremely draining and it just plays with you. It's very hard. And I think any any disease that feels like you're dying inside or feels like you're you're breaking apart is horrible and I don't wish this or any other one on anybody it is really bad and it, it has pushed me to become who I am now and it has made me be like oh you're not stopping me like I don't care if my hand falls off I don't care if I can't pick up a brush and I really can't sometimes sometimes I'm doing nails like even my clients you, you my clients will back me up 100% I'll be doing my clients nails and my finger cramps up and I'm like oh crap one second and I'm like Ugh. and I crank it up or sometimes I'll even grab the brush like this because my fingers won't grip they won't have the strength to grip 
so sometimes I'll be like this and I'll be completing it. So I don't feel myself doing my nails as much anymore. I did these sets just recently. It's like, um, I did them like a, wow, I look like I'm new at this. I did them like a fall color vibe and I was recording it and like halfway through I was like, I'm done. I give up. I'm so hard. Like it was so hard for me to complete it because I was in so much pain. I took four breaks doing my own hands. So it normally takes me about three hours to do my nails because it's just very hard <laughs> to do my own nails. When I do my clients, it's normally that I book them within an hour and a half to two hours, depending on what they're getting done. And not always do I take about two hours. I've been really good at speeding up lately and all that. But um, for myself, it takes me a long time and I cramp up and it's frustrating. So I'm still here and I'm still going and I got this. It's just, it's a horrible thing to experience and it has definitely gave me bumps in the road, but it has not stopped me for sure. Okay, number three, what is your zodiac sign? When is your birthday and how old are you? My zodiac sign is Pisces. Um, my birthday is March 3rd and I am 30 years old. I know I had to think about it right. I'm 30 years old, so I'll be 31 next year. Um, where were you born? What state do you live in now? I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Um, loved the city you know it was it's really pretty it's an amazing city especially when i was younger it was my favorite like to go in the city instead of school and i was paying for school so you know but um i moved to texas i am now in texas i live here in texas you know we were very thankful and blessed to have amazing friends who opened their doors for us and who's my best friend and my husband's best friend and um, they opened doors and they gave us an opportunity i only came to visit once in march this year and my husband stayed after that. Once we visited, we're like, is this it? This is it, we're doing it. It was like the fastest, most unexpected decision. Like from us, me and him talked about it before. But the fact that we chose Texas, that happened within like a month. We were like, yeah, it's gonna be Texas. Before we met, we talked about moving. So we just weren't sure where, um, but it happened like this. And he was able to come over here, be with our friends and get everything we need to get. And here we are. And I love it. I love the weather. I love how quiet it is, how there's not a lot of people, and how everybody's so nice. Like nobody's yelling at you while they're driving and they're so kind. I don't know. Maybe it's just the area I'm in. Maybe that's it. Um, but I do still love Chicago. I mean, how can you not? It's a beautiful city. It's just I'm not a city girl anymore. I'm very chill and very quiet. I have my kids, so I like to do things and activities that really focus on them. What is your favorite place to vacation or where would you like to vacation? Um, favorite place so far, I haven't really been anywhere, honestly. <laughs> I've been to Mexico. Um, I did go to Cali, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, and that's it, that's my list. So I really haven't been to many places, but I would say Mexico, Cancun was beautiful. My kids loved it, they loved the sand. The beach just to play there for hours and then I can sit there and drink and lay there for hours on the beach it's like win-win you know so it, it was such a beautiful beautiful experience uh, where I would like to go I think Fiji I love islands beaches you know those kind of vibes I think that would be so beautiful I mean I'd actually be interested in Italy too I think that would be such a nice experience um, I'm not like a big fan of like tourism so I don't go and do fill out those things where you go and tour things and talk and uh, I'm just like just leave me alone give me my space to like to have fun and enjoy the weather but um yeah we'll see you in the future uh the next question is if you weren't doing nails what else would you be doing what are your passions well do I have passions um I love cooking cooking and baking I love it I truly truly love it and not to you know tooth my own horn but I'm pretty good at it I think I'm very good at it I can really bake and I don't really measure stuff I just kind of like you know the old Mexican type always like just a little bit of this and a little bit of this that's the recipe but um, I think I'm really good at it and whenever something doesn't come out good I make sure I find out why and how to fix it and I enjoy it I really truly enjoy it I thought about doing it I thought about honestly being a chef or going to cooking school but I, I enjoyed it but I wasn't a hundred percent passion because I thought of okay I go to work I cook excuse me again <laughs> I go to work I cook and I do all this but then when I come home would I still be as passionate and will I still love it as much as I do now 
and that made me think and I'm like eh, I, think, I don't think that's something I want to do because I do nails now you know whether I do my clients nails my nails or whoever nails but I still love doing nails like I can teach it I'm, like I'm doing now on YouTube if I was to teach a video then I can take care of a client and then I can still sit there and do my own nails and still enjoy it and be happy so I felt like I didn't have that with cooking I'd rather do that for my kids and my husband and I love doing it and it shows because I do it with love <laughs> at least I try other passions or what do I like to do I love love working out working out is makes me feel so good you know I'm not built or I don't have muscles or I'm not very slim but I just like working out the main reasons I like working out and doing yoga I do yoga at home I did do yoga in Chicago with a yoga trainer but um, the reason why I don't do it no more is because I moved over here and then I haven't had time to go look and I, I already know the basics so that's what I do here at home but um, it helps me it truly helps me I would rather be crawling trying to get up the stairs to get into my house than be going through and feeling the pain that I feel every single day with my fibro myalgia so working out that soreness you feel where your legs are like jelly and you're walking around and you're like oh crap I'm about to like go on the floor love um, it also makeup makeup it's something new that I'm bringing to my channel I did record this makeup look that I will be posting a few days later maybe a week or so after this video but um, I enjoy it I'm not a makeup artist I don't claim to be um, I'm not the greatest at makeup I mean my blending can still use some work but I love it and I'm gonna be posting videos because I can and I like to and I enjoy it and I hope you guys enjoy watching it you know I think it's fun fun to do it you know I don't do my makeup like this often the last time I did was like four months ago and look <laughs> I don't do it often okay the next question do you aspire to do your own acrylics glitters or nail tool line if so would it be available for do-it-yourself people and beginners in the future um, I definitely would love to have at least my acrylic line something that I can make myself that I can mold, you know, finely milled into different colors and glitters. I would love to do that. That's definitely something that I would be very passionate about. Um, but it takes money to make money. And it takes a lot to start a business, a lot to start a business, especially if you're creating things from scratch. You know what I mean? Like one thing is if you had a wholesaler and you buy from them and then you sell, that's, I feel, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But I feel like that would be more, you know, easier for me at least. Like if I was to go and get my whole, my brushes and stuff like that, I think that's easier. But when it comes to what I want to do, which is acrylics first before anything, it's a little bit more work. I have to buy the machine to help me do the blending because I'm not going to sit there with, you know, my little thing to make it. I'll take forever and I'll kill myself. But um, I definitely do want to. It's something that I, you know, me and my husband talked about. But it's something that as of right now, it's not something we can do. Um, we are trying to, we just moved here, so we're trying to settle in and to prioritize our life. And it's priority. And right now it's my YouTube channel and it's doing the videos that I do right now and focusing at 100% and giving you guys my 100% attention right now. And then maybe when I get an opportunity, maybe somebody will reach out and want to collab and do a, I don't know, a kit or a set or something. Then I'll be like, yes, I'm there. Because if it's a good company, like a great company, and they have amazing products and I truly love those products of course I would love to collab but as of right now it's it's just in the back list right now but it's definitely in the future if that makes sense it's still coming up it will happen I'll we'll see but it'll happen and yes it will be available for beginner I definitely understand I always try my best to get in um in being a student and before even being a student's shoes to understand because I was there when I started doing nails there was barely anything on YouTube and this is like eight years ago there was barely anything anywhere maybe seven years ago I'm over exaggerating and I understand so that's why I'm trying my best to do certain videos to make you guys see that I do care and I do want to give up as much as I can for you guys okay number eight if you can give one golden rule for nail beginners what would it be other than practice other than practice, I have two. I can't just, like you guys can see that, right? I have two. Um, I couldn't pick one, so I picked two, okay, guys? Um, I would say invest in yourselves and research and educate yourselves. Uh, what I mean by that is 
really know if this is a hobby, if it's just for fun and you're only doing it for yourself and maybe your sister, your mom, and you're only accepting tips, go for it, go crazy, do what you gotta do, have fun. But if this is something that you wanna do as a career and you plan to take clients, excuse me, and you're charging these clients, you have to really think about going to school. I really think it should be something that's a priority, in my opinion, because it takes one phone call from a hater or one phone call from a client or customer that you injured or that you cut or that was not satisfied for them to call the state board and tell on you. And if the state board finds out that you're working and you are not licensed, depending on the state, okay, depending on the state, some states don't require being licensed, but in Illinois and in Texas, you need to be licensed. And they will not allow you to get your license ever if they catch you. So I would really, really recommend you guys invest, save money. Um, don't go out buying all these nail supplies and nail kits and nail tools before you even go to school. Learn about the products because that's what school's for. I knew diseases and disorders and how to sanitize and disinfect. That's what you learn at school. The state board gives the school these rules and regulations that they have to follow and they have to teach students and as long as they do that, that's all that matters, you know, to them. The state board just wants you to know how to properly clean this effect and how to treat someone if anybody gets hurt or anything like that. So if you want all those fancy designs and acrylic encapsulations and all that other stuff, you learn that with time. You learn that with YouTube. You learn that with uh, specific classes that you pay for yourself out of pocket by other nail techs. So that's the stuff that you will learn. So school is just for that just for for school for learning and I, I get a lot of messages of oh i paid and i went to school and it was horrible blah 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 you know and i get it because when i went to be a teacher there at, at a school i tried my best to do hands-on i tried my best to do design and nail art because i didn't learn that much of that so i wanted to implement it in my students um but yeah invest in yourself i would really think invest in yourself don't go crazy buying and spending without knowing school will teach you ingredients they will teach you products they will teach you um, all the proper things and all the stuff that you need to know to back yourself up and then once you're done with that you learn art is is art is not you have it or you don't in my opinion art is free art is something that you get to to learn different ways art can be so many different things and you can learn it so many different ways not just because this is the way that you you got taught means that that's the only way possible so i feel that definitely go to school if you're into doing this okay next question what is next for you do you plan on opening your own salon or would you consider being an instructor like opening up your own school um i do not, I don't want to say ever, I do not have it in my plans to open up a salon. It's not something I want to do. It's not something I aspire to do. What else do I see myself doing? Definitely YouTube. I see myself hopefully still doing YouTube and, you know, doing my passion, which is nails, whether it's taking on clients. As of right now, I'm currently not taking clients because I just moved here. I'm figuring out my paperwork and all that. So I'm not taking clients, but it would be figuring out um, what to do next, you know. But it, it's just my YouTube focusing on 100%. That's exactly what I'm doing now. Just that, so far. Yeah, as of right now, at least. Where do you see yourself in five years? This kind of ties in with the other question. Definitely, like I said, uh, some sort of acrylic line or my own little line, a product here or there. Nothing crazy, but if it does, great. If it doesn't, you know, it's okay. But um, yeah. I do see myself doing some sort of a, a line with my name on it and that's mine, my baby that I get to share with you guys. I would love, love, but this is like a long shot, but it's still there in my list. I would love to be able to license students. I would love to do that. I would love to have a school, even if it's just myself, you know, one-on-one -on -one with students and be able to teach you everything from the books and hands on and design and art and then be able to give you those hours that you can go and take a test to get your license i would love to do that there's just so many requirements and so many rules that i would have to do and have to have and it's a lot so um and i did look into that already because you know i can't wait i'm impatient to know 
but um, that would be something I would definitely want to do. Um, hopefully, if it's in God's plans, then that would be awesome. What do you like and dislike about nails? How old were you when you started doing nails? I was 24 years old when I started doing nails. Um, what I like about nails is how artistic it is and how free you are with design, nail art, with structure, with everything. You can create and build and do so many different ways. There's not just one way to do something. People would say, that's not the right way. Well, that's not how you should do it. Well, you shouldn't do this and do that. No, like you, if you went to school, you know what's right and wrong. You know what can get your license taken away. Just don't do that. Okay, those are the people you need to listen to. Now, when it comes to creating nails and building and doing the, the little holes, like the little crystals in between, um, doing the little turns, doing whatever type of nails you like to do, do it. Don't let anybody change your mind in doing it. It's what you like to do, do it. Um, I love that. I love that about nails. What I don't like is like the fancy names for new products, like dip nails. Like, yes, it's dip nails, but a lot of people don't know that dip nails is just acrylic powder that's finely milled so that when you dip it or when you pour it on top, it goes on very smoothly. They, they think that it's two separate powders. It's the same exact thing, okay? Just like gel powder, there's no such thing as gel powder. Gel powder is not such thing. Gel is a jelly-like consistency. Like hair gel, it looks like that. That's gel. Um, powder gel is just crystal clear acrylic. So that's some stuff you learn at school. That's thing, looking at the ingredients, knowing what the ingredients are. Like that's the stuff you learn at school. And that's things that kind of make me feel like, okay, well, the best way that I can get out of this is to educate my students and educate my clients like I educate my clients no this is not gel what did you have that is it powder is it liquid and then just explaining to them what things are um another new fancy thing I mean I'm trying to think of other stuff just different labels different things that they make it seem like uh, the base for dip talking back to dip the base for dip and the top coat for dip is the same thing and what is it it's glue it's just nail glue if you look at the ingredients it is glue so I always use just regular glue I, when I have them I'll use the base and top coat whatever but um, it is glue so you can use nail glue regular acrylic powder your activator and keep going back and forth and it will just work just as good if not even better than the dip powder now let me just take a drink because I'm <coughs> thirsty I have my cucumber water Have you ever thought of online training? I think maybe in the future, it's something that seems very interesting to me. Uh, I just wouldn't know how to go about it. What I mean by that is I wouldn't be sure if it would be like video chat and it would be face to face and it would be certain days and times or if it would be me doing a private YouTube channel with videos and then you subscribing and um, signing up for that and watching those videos and learning and me quizzing you and stuff like that or I'm not sure how I would go about it if I do decide to do it but as of right now it's, it's in the future um, I'm thinking about it if you guys have any ideas or tips definitely would be up for reading them and seeing what you guys have to say. Are you licensed or self-taught? If so, where did you get your training to become a nail tech? I am licensed, I'm a licensed nail tech, and I'm also a licensed educator in Chicago, and I am currently working on the paperwork so that I could be licensed in Texas as well. I did learn myself. I learned at home doing my own nails. Uh, then I went to family members, and then from there I went to school and then started taking care of clients. And the next one was, where did you go to school? I went to the Nail Inn um, in Chicago and it's a beauty school. And honestly, I looked up nail schools and there wasn't many, it was like maybe two or three, three including the one I went to. And two of them were in the city and I lived in the suburbs. So it just, it wasn't for me to go all over there. 
but um, I would just suggest you googling nail schools near me and just trying to look at the reviews and see the school website and seeing what you think works best for you but all in all most of the schools are very similar um, I think that you're gonna learn almost identical the same things identically the same things um, everything else comes with time practice and you learn yourself honestly but it's, it's hard to go to nail school learning was easy when you're passionate and you enjoy what you're learning and you're very interested in what you're learning you will give it time and you would really do the homework and study and practice and learn and it was really easy I really did enjoy it um, I learned a lot a lot uh, 17 how do you build clientele especially right after school what was the hardest part <clears throat> Uh, number one thing I can tell you about building clientele is to not stress. Don't stress about building clientele. Um, the, the, the way that I've noticed you get the most clientele out of is word of mouth. Word of mouth. There you go. Um, so I have my one of my best friends who is my comadre and she was my guinea pig she was the one that from like day one that i wanted to do anything on anybody's nails she was the one that i did it on and i would give her a stack of my cards and she, anybody that complimented her or anybody that had nails she would be like here you go it's my best friend here you go she does nails and she would just pass them all out and she would come the next appointment just two weeks later she's like i need like 50 more cards and i'm like what the heck so nice so yeah get yourself a guinea pig someone that you can not charge and do their nails and give them a stack of cards and tell them to just give them out whenever anybody asks and that's a great way to build clientele now i'm not saying go out there and do free nails for a few people no i would say one no more than two maybe one that you trust that you know is not going to take advantage of you um and do that worth the mouth um social media social media you guys i don't care if you're a student i don't care if you're not even a student yet get social media on about it definitely get an instagram post a picture even if it's just yourself painting because Honestly, I look back at my pictures, like if you scroll down all the way down to my Instagram, if you go all the way down, you'd be like, whoa, she wasn't that great, and I wasn't, I wasn't that good. But um, I see my changes, I see my progress, and that makes me feel good. Because sometimes, you know, I can be very hard on myself. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I could have done this better, or why didn't I do this better? And then I go back and I look and I'm like, no. No, I got this. I'm good. I'm good. And it just motivates me. So I really think social media. Definitely. That is your free way of getting your work out there, honestly, and getting your name out there. Um, so yeah, don't pay for advertisement anywhere. You don't need it with social media and getting business cards so you can give them to your clients and they'll pass them out. Maybe give like a $5 off your next manicure if, if somebody comes in saying you gave them their card or percentage off or you get free glitter or crystals, whatever. It's st stuff that you don't have to pay out of pocket, but they're gonna bring new clients, so that's a good thing to do. Um, confidence. Confidence is 100% it to getting clients and keeping clients. Um, a lot of people like to say, oh, Sarah's prices are so much cheaper. Why are yours so expensive? Oh, um, I don't know, Martha said, it's like, no, I'm Yesenia and these are my prices and this is what I offer. So it's putting your foot down. It's saying, this is the price for this is what I do. I'm sorry if if it's not something that you agree with, or I'm sorry I can't be of any help, or I can't take you as a client. I do apologize, but I hope you find someone that, um, that you personally like or love or whatever, phrase it nicely. Sometimes um, when you think of stuff, it comes out one way, but you have to sit there and actually think before responding all crazy. But um, Definitely confidence. If you're not confident in what you do, their client won't sense it and then they'll be like, I don't know if I should come back. Be confident in your work. Value what you do and charge what you think, you know, what you think your work is worth. Being straightforward with your clients. Um, what I mean by that is <clears throat> if a client shows you a picture of their nails and what they want and you're like, oh yeah, I'll set you up and then they leave your shop and their nails don't look like that or don't look anything similar to that, that would not bring you more clients. Um, being genuine with yourself, knowing what you're capable of and what you're not. I'm not saying don't go out there and practice and learn. I'm just saying don't practice your first time doing something on a client that's paying you. 
I honestly have had the most amazing clients who, when I tell them, you know what, I haven't mastered this yet. This is something that is not, I don't have the products for this. So I don't have the similar glitters or powders or whatever it is. They're like, I trust you. You do what you have to do. And in my head, I'm like, okay. So do what you're great at. Show that off left and right. And then on the side, practice everything else. Practice what you want to get good at. I am good at acrylics. I love acrylics. They're my favorite. But when it comes to like hands-on painting and design, pfft, I suck at that. So I know for a fact I'm not going to say I'm going to do that or I'm going to offer that because I know I'm not good at it and I would, wouldn't want my client walking out when I'm not satisfied with it. So just being confident in yourself and being honest with your clients. Yes, and I keep saying, um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like my son says. <clears throat> what is your favorite design? Uh, design enhancement and in what order do you like the other enhancements? Sorry, I scratch myself a lot. This is my area of scratching, so I'm trying not to. Um, <clears throat> my favorite out of all the enhancements and um, out of the products, I would say is acrylic. I love acrylic nails. It is just so open to do anything, encapsulating 3D, building, solid colors, glitters. There's just so much you can do with acrylic, and I truly love it. Uh, the next one I would say is gel, builder gel. Um, that's what I always do on my hands. Um, so you see, it's gel I love on my hands. I love acrylic on my clients and I love using it for my clients. But when it comes to working on my own nails, I find it easier and more calming to do gel. It's just, it's lightweight. I could do them super long and they don't weigh anything. They're not bulky. So I love that on myself, but I like, prefer working with acrylic. Um, after that would be gel polish, uh, just like a gel no chip manicure. Um, those are pretty nice. They're super easy. I can get one done in 25, 30 minutes, depending on how bad the client's nails are. But I enjoy doing um, that because it's so simple and slick and it's just such a good change, a pretty little change, you know? Uh, the next one would be dip. I like dip. Um, I don't really have a lot of dip clients. Uh, I don't really promote dip too much, but if a client wants dip, I definitely would do a dip. That would be next. Uh, poly gel would be after that. Then it's fiberglass. And then at the end, like the very end, like all the way over there at the end is regular polish. Not my friend. I don't like regular polish. I have no patience for regular polish. But if a client requests it, I will try my best to convince them for gel polish. And if it doesn't work, I will use regular polish. Next question is, any recommendations for a nail addict who wants to start doing nails? I think just making sure that it's something you want to do before you start spending all this money on. I, I definitely think it's investing in yourself, educating yourself, uh, mastering the basics first before moving on. Um, I see a lot of students, a lot of my previous students and just people in general who send me messages I get all your messages, I get your comments. I might not reply to every single one, but I do see them and I do read them. Um, sorry, I'll stop trying to say um. <laughs> but, space. <laughs> but it would be mastering the basics. Uh, learning how to get the structure correctly. Doing a nice little apex and keeping it strong. Because think about it, if you're good at art and you can create these amazing 3D flowers and this amazing design, but those nails don't last more than a week, let alone more than a few days, then you're not doing yourself any favors. So I would definitely suggest to get the basic stuff first. Learn how to prep your nails and mastering that. Learn how to properly do an apex and mastering that. Making sure your client's nails last two weeks, three weeks. I mean, the previous nails I had, I had them for six weeks. It was so long, like they were so long, like they were hurting long. So if you can master keeping someone's nails for that long, you know, of course it's not beneficial to you if you know, you're not getting that money within two to three weeks, but at the same time, you can increase your price and that client's gonna keep coming to you because they're like, man, these nails last forever. And you can increase by $5 every few months or every year and you will still be making a decent amount of money but it's, it's the quality. It's making sure your quality is there and the base is perfectly before moving on to the designs and the crazy stuff and all that other stuff. Mastering the first things first, of course. 
What acrylic systems do you recommend other than orderless? Nothing that sets too fast or sets too slow. Something affordable. Orderless is... I don't like to say the word hate because that is a strong word, but I hate orderless. I don't like it. I think it's a waste of money. I think it's a waste of time. But if you like it, if it works for you, great. If you're going to do acrylics, you kind of have to accept the smell. There's different levels of it. There's really strong ones and there's ones that are kind of, okay, still smells like it, but it's not crazy. Or you could just buy an ionizer. Um, it is a, like a, I can't think of the name. It's an ionizer. It's It like sucks it in the air and cleans it out for like smokers, uh, people with pets, just make sure it's an ionizer. And if you have a small room where you do your nails and you use acrylic, use one of those in there and it'll clear out the, the, the air. You know, it won't be like 100%, oh, you'll smell it, but it won't be as harsh. So that's something I recommend if you're doing it at home um, and you don't want it to smell. But another, let's see, I would say art, I wrote them all down, so I'm reading them from there. Artisan Low Odor Monomer. Um, it's you don't have to be licensed to get this and it's from nailsuperstore.com that one's a pretty decent uh, priced and pretty decent monomer uh, CND retention plus monomer you don't have to be licensed to get this and you can also get it at nailsuperstore.com or any other beauty nail store it is my second favorite monomer CND retention plus monomer is the Yes, it is amazing. It is pricey. It is more ex on the expensive side, but it is such good quality monomer. Um, the only reason why I don't buy it anymore, I still have like two containers. They're like half full. I have them there. But the only reason why I don't buy any more of them is because I only now buy Young Nails, which is my ultimate favorite monomer and polymer. Of course, I use other polymers, other powders. But the monomer I love from Young Nails. I can't go back. <laughs> but um, Young Nails, you have to be licensed to get it. If you are licensed or if you are a student, most of the time they let you with your student like ID or if you have your like your paperwork or receipt saying that you're going to school and that you pay to go to school, they usually allow you to go into like um, what's that beauty Cosmo Pro and stuff like that. Or you can go with your teacher and it's a field trip as well. Uh, another one, a powder that's really good and it's super inexpensive, you guys, is Mia Secrets Polymer. Uh, you don't have to be licensed. You can get this from Amazon, eBay, from... There's so many stores. Uh, Glamour Nail... No, Glamour... I forgot the website, but everything's going to be linked down below, guys. They have beautiful ones. My favorite, other than clear, of course, is their pink... Um, their, their cover pink is gorgeous. I love it for ombres, and that's all I use for ombres. So I would recommend that. I get mine from Amazon, but you can get yours from anywhere. It is great powder. I don't use their monomer because in my own opinion, it is too strong of a smell, but that's just me. Um, yeah, and another cheap uh, polymer powder is Glam & Glitz. They're powders you don't have to be licensed to get. You can get these at so many stores. I'll link some below too so you can see. They're everywhere. They're normally anywhere from $5.99 to like $9.99, which is freaking awesome for one ounce. And let me tell you, these powders are this small because it's a one ounce, but you can literally take half of the powder, take it out, put clear or glitter or anything else, and shake it up. And let me tell you, you it would still be as pigmented. That's how pigmented and amazing quality those powders are. A few more questions and we're done guys. Favorite affordable poly gel kit? Um, I really do like Assure, Azure, Assure, you know. It's from AliExpress. I'm sure they sell it at other places too. That one's really good. I like it. I've tried many different uh, brand name ones. Mm, they're okay. <coughs> one of my favorites was Unikis. Unikis. Can't say that one either. I got that one from AliExpress as well. And um, I got these as gifts from students, so that's how I learned about them. And they were really good. They, the Unikiss is the one I recommend out of all three. If you don't care about brands and you don't care about labels, like if this is not known 100%, then definitely recommend that. And if you're on a budget, definitely recommend it, especially if you're practicing on yourself or on a mannequin, go for it. Um, if you want something more high-end or something with the actual name, a brand that 
um, is out there and that um, you want to be using on your clients and you you know it's great to show, show your labels to your clients and for them to know what you're using I would think uh, Inhal Couture Happy Gel um, it wasn't like my favorite or anything like that but it was one of the better ones that I liked compared to the other poly gels that I've tried um, and it's always on sale it's like 20 bucks for a tube but normally the tubes are like $40 so something I recommend on top of I love Inhal Couture I support you know I love Max. I support Max. I love his products. I love, love, love his top coat. That is my favorite top coat. Like one of my favorite top coats. Because the next one is the gel bottle top coat. But that is why I, I would go and lean more for that poly gel. Okay, next question. Do you enjoy doing pedicures? I do. Um, when I first started as a student, I've never done pedicures before I went to school. So when I went to school, I was kind of like, Oh God, I couldn't stand looking at feet. I couldn't stand anybody with chunk glass, you know, sandals, flip flops. Oh, I couldn't, I just couldn't look at it. So I went to school, I did pedicures and I was good at it. Like I love changing. I love how when they started and they ended, it was like, bam, a big change. And I enjoyed it. Um, so yes, I do really do enjoy pedicures. Now I no longer offer them and I haven't been offering them for about a year. Um, and that is because of how it affects me. Uh, Pedicures take a lot, a lot out of me. Pedicures take a lot of effort, a lot of work. Physically, it's something that really banged me up. I can do two to three nail sets and feel like I did one pedicure. So it's something that I just couldn't no longer offer because I would be in such pain that I wouldn't be able to do nail sets. So I would rather take in, you know, six nail sets a day than two pedicures or a pedicure and that's it. It was just not beneficial to me and that is the main reason why I just no longer accept, you know did pedicures let's see next question how is it sharing space with your brother <clears throat> so my brother is a worldwide educator slash very well-known barber he is extremely talented um, he he is just He's an inspiration and he's someone I definitely look up to. He just came up to me and he's like, hey, so you're working from home? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm opening up a studio in like a little bit. Um, would you want to come work with me? And I'm still like trying to figure out what he was meaning. And, he, you know, he was like, no, no. I mean, like you get to pay rent and you get your own space and you get your own clients whenever you want, whatever days you want to work. It is your space, your time, whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> That's how I went into work with him and I got my own space. Um, I felt like we got closer to be honest with you. Um, we, all my siblings, we, we, we truly love each other and we respect each other. But I feel like when we grew up, we all had different ages and um, different groups of friends. So I don't think we were as close as we are now. And I feel like me and my brother really got close and I learned so much from him, from seeing him talk to his clients, seeing him do his videos on Instagram and his YouTube videos while he's recording and I'm taking care of clients or I'm doing my own thing. Like just knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Like seriously, it was really great. I, I learned so much. He he pushed me to hustle. He pushed me to learn. Um, and that's awesome. So I, I loved working with him. I observe so much and I have so much respect for him. And it's, it's a goal to be anything close to who he is now and who he was like he the way he he built himself by himself it's just insane but um it was awesome it was a great time and it's kind of sad not to have my own space but um in a way i know bigger and better things are coming and i know that everything we're doing is for the right reasons so i do appreciate having that but since i moved to texas i no longer have that studio space um but it was really nice working with him my dominant hand keeps breaking any tips I would suggest making sure you have a really strong apex so that when you hit something, it doesn't break or pop off. Don't use your hands as tools. Don't bite your nails because a lot of my clients were like, I don't bite my nails. I don't use them as tools. And I would see them and you can see like the marks of the teeth. And if your free edge is way too thin, that can also be a reason of why they break. Um, trying to figure out what the best shape is for you, depending on your job title and what you do and um, how you handle your hands, how hard you are on them, figuring out what shape works for you. I plan on doing a video on shapes and what works best for what type of people and how to do the shapes and all that good stuff. So stay tuned for that. And also trying to not use your dominant hand as much, training your left hand or your right hand, whatever hand you are. So 
my hand was put on rest. My doctor told me I was not allowed to use it. It was restrained and not allowed. So I had to learn how to do things with my left hand. So I had to learn <coughs> how to do everything with it. And it got to the point where I was even hurting this one from how much I was using only this one. But all in all, let me tell you, I do everything with both my hands. I, I literally can do nails with both of my hands. And I love it because I worked really hard in doing it. So I would recommend even in now what you do with your hands to not give all the pressure and everything to your dominant hand. Hopefully those tips work. Prepping your nail, making sure your nails are prepped, uh, making sure your nails are not too long for what you're doing. Because if your natural nail is extremely short, even shorter than where your skin ends and your free edge, then that can also affect it. Can you show side-by-side -side gel versus acrylic pros and cons video? Yes, definitely. That is a video that I'm currently working on, not editing-wise, but I'm writing and stuff. I have my whole notebook filled with pros and cons. And I just kind of let it come to me whenever I'm working with acrylic or anything comes up, I'll write it in there because I want it to be as educational or at least as informative as possible. And I know maybe some people won't agree or anything there, but I'm just telling you guys from what I learned from school and what I've experienced. So yes, that's coming up. Stick around for that too. Uh, nail trends you don't like or don't want to try. I don't like, don't agree, will not try encapsulating insects i don't care if they're dead i don't care if they look cute to some people i just that's something i would never want to do another thing is duck nails if a client ever comes to me and says i want these duck nails i'll be like i am so sorry but nope it's not gonna happen i think this nail shape is not for your fingers but i can definitely show you something that i would recommend for your fingers bubble nails mm -mm, that's a no i think bubble nails that just remember you're putting your name on these nails now I'm not saying just because it's not pretty to me means that it's not pretty at all. It's just something I choose not to offer for my clients or to do. So that's just my own choice. And yeah, <laughs> fur nails, that's the, another one. Fur nails, I just, sanitation reasons, like, uh, I don't know, fur nails, no. Last question, you guys. Yay, my likes this question. I know I took forever. It is my first video, so bear with me. How do you stay so calm in your comments when people are coming for you? I would snap if I got any mean comments. Okay, um, I try not to deal with any of these comments. Um, first thing is first, uh, get yourself a Tony. My husband is like I've been talking about him and bragging about him because I just am going to because I'm that happy and in love with him. <laughs> Um, he is very involved in not only my life, of course, but in my career. He wants to know what nails I did on myself. He wants to know if I did anything different, if I found any challenges. He wants to know if I replied to my comments on my video. I love that. So I think that truly helps me because if a comment makes me feel some type of way, I like read it, I take it in. I try to say what I'm gonna, you know, I try to think of what I'm gonna say because if it was just me, like me, Yesenia, back in the day, I would be like, oh, hell, and start going crazy, right? But I've learned to, to stop myself and to try to understand what they're trying to say. So if it's a comment where they're not honestly trying to be mean or rude, they're just saying something a certain way, especially when it's type. When it's type, you take it the way you wanna take it, right? So, if it's taken in a harsh way, like, whoa, what is this person going off of? Then I will respond if I feel that, I, that I'm okay to respond. I will respond and try to make them see what I'm trying to say. And then most of the time, like 95% of the time when it's comments like that, the person say, oh, thank you so much. You know, I'm sorry if I sounded a certain way or, oh, okay, I just didn't understand that. So, oh, okay, yeah, of course, you can do it any way you want. It's just, you know, I thought this or my opinion. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm not going to bash you for your opinion, but at the same time, don't do that to me as well. You know, it's my <clears throat> my channel, and I do what I want to put out there in my channel, and I just hope that people like it, and those that like it will stick around, and those that don't, you know, I try to make it easy on themselves by ignoring them or blocking them or deleting, and remember, you got blocking, you got deleting, and you don't have to keep anybody you don't want to. That is not... That doesn't make you any anybody less or it doesn't make you any i can't even think of the word <laughs> it doesn't make you seem any type of way you know what i mean like 
it's your channel you do as you please and that is exactly what I'm doing so I, I go and I talk to my husband when a comment really does get to me and that's rare I think it's only happened like twice that it really got to me because one person really wrote like a whole paragraph about how much they they hate this or they can't believe this and oh my god and like I was like whoa like I don't think this comment is for me imagine what this person is going through for them to sit here take the time to write this whole comment on a nail video like not even a cheese video not even a, a video where they're talking crap about other people but a nail video so I automatically just block and delete I'm not wasting my time and energy on this person when I have a ton other subscribers that love me and actually care about my channel and actually want to learn and enjoy watching my videos like that's who I make my videos for do what you gotta do to make yourself stay in a nice calm happy place like that's what my channel is I I started you know with that one comment the whole paragraph one um, I've never really gotten anything like that except for that one and I had like a little war going on like it was insane I had some of my subscribers like just go off of this person like tell them off and this person's replying and they're back and forth and I'm like oh god I don't want this in my channel like I don't want my my subscribers coming in here feeling the need that they have to you know that they have to defend me and feeling like they have to, their mood has to change this person you know so I want to avoid that so that's another reason too. I don't ever want my subscribers to feel some type of way in my channel. I want them to be here and see good comments and be happy. Um, that doesn't mean I'm gonna be deleting all the comments that I get negative. I leave a lot of comments. There's people talking about, cause I don't cut cuticles on other clients cause that's against the law to do, but I cut my cuticle on my nails. That's just what I do because it is my hand and my nails. I don't ever do it on my clients and my clients know that. They beg me and they try to yell at me. I don't care, it's not gonna happen. But. Whenever I do my videos and I cut my cuticles, I'll get complaints about, oh, I can't believe you're doing, oh, it's, it's like, I don't, I'm not gonna delete that. That's your opinion and you're welcome to speak. You know what I mean? So there's certain comments that are like, oh, you didn't follow this right, or oh, you didn't polish this right, or oh, this looks really bad, it doesn't look that good. I'll leave that comment, I don't care. But if you're out here trying to tell me almost that I'm gonna die or something like that, it's like, oh, no, we don't need that here. We do not need that. But um, yeah. And that is about it for my channel. Oh, and another thing, I knew what I said no for when I made a YouTube channel, I knew what was coming, I knew I had to be, you know, I knew what was coming, so I can't be like that. I can't take everything so hard. I can't like, think that everybody's trying to come out after me or trying to get me. It's just, I'm here to do what I love and what I enjoy, and if you love and enjoy watching me, then that's all I care about, and that's what I'm here for. And hopefully my channel keeps growing, and yeah, I'll have more makeup videos, I'll have, my keto diet videos, um, on my weight loss journey, and a bunch of other things. And if there's anything you want to see, just let me know, guys. Thank you so much for the time and energy you guys have given to my channel, the effort, honestly. I know you could be watching so many other people, and I know you could be doing so many other things, but you're here watching me, and I truly appreciate that. I'm going to start crying because I'm an emotional wreck right now. And it's late. It's literally almost going to be 12. Ugh, it's so late. But um, I really do appreciate it, and... It just makes me so happy that you guys are happy with my channel and you guys are enjoying my content and um, that's what I'm here for. So thank you guys so much again and I appreciate you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed and turn on your notifications because there's going to be so many different kind of videos coming up. So definitely don't forget that. Thank you guys. Hi guys, for you, those of you that don't know. Um... Mm.